Hello everyone, my name is Slava Dubeyka. So CXL benchmarking. So Adam raised this topic uh, recently, and I realized that this, this topic is pretty complex. Uh, it's a multi-dimensional problem. Let me just angle the microphone. Okay. Just How now? Better? Just shout it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Adam raised this topic recently, and I realize that this pro uh, topic is uh, it's complex problem uh, because, uh, for example, it's multidimensional. Because, for example, we try to ask, uh, ask multiple questions about CXL. Uh, for example, what is a killer application for CXL? Or, for example, how I can uh, make my application CXL agnostic? Or, for example, uh, what can I do if I would like not to change my application, but, for example, achieve something like uh, better performance within CXL, or maybe not degrade my performance within CXL. And also, for example, how build my CXL infrastructure, or for example, how to test uh, my application for CXL if I haven't CXL memory, or if I haven't enough CXL memory. So it's a lot of questions. And for example, in the future, potentially, uh, for example, we can try to uh, maybe uh, do continuous benchmarking in the background, try to detect, de uh, detect maybe some bottlenecks or performance degradation of uh, existing uh, infrastructure. And for example, if you would like to decrease TCO cost, for example, by using more CXL memories and local DRAM, so how to do this? It's a lot of, it's a lot of questions. And uh, for example, if you're considering some uh, target use cases, uh, potentially, it could be uh, huge relational databases, uh, social networks, uh, in-memory databases, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning workloads. It could be a lot of uh, different workloads. It's, uh, it could be now, it could be in the future. And for example, currently we're trying to, uh, for example, do sharding, uh, play something like a lot of memory in every node. But in the future, we could have something like uh, a lot of CXL memory, uh, maybe some computational power. It could be disagreed architecture. So, and it could be slightly different environment. And the problem, how to do benchmarking, it's slightly complicated problem. So, and if we considering uh, any application uh, from something like abstract point of view, so any application, it's something like set of uh, threads. And if you're talking about memory, so uh, any thread can. Uh, locate memory at some time point, can delocate memory or free memory at some time point. Uh, if memory was allocated, then application trying to access this memory, read, write, uh, do something with uh, data in this memory. So from the memory point of view, any application uh, have something like a memory access pattern. Uh, and for example, it's possible to see that it could be multiple threads. It could be uh, some number of uh, memory locations. And uh, it's possible to summarize that, for example, uh, we could have some uh, number of uh, parameters that we can use uh, for, uh, like, first of all, to identify a memory access pattern and then try to optimize this memory access pattern by uh, maybe something like modification of these uh, parameters. Because, for example, as I mentioned, it could be uh, some number of threads. Uh, first of all, uh, memory should be located. Uh, Allocation could happen uh, by using some uh, granularity. Uh, usually, uh, then, for example, we have deallocation at some time point, and between allocation and deallocation, we can access uh, memory, and memory can be accessed with different gr granularity. So, finally, it's something like uh, some multidimensional space so that we can, first of all, uh, detect, uh, we can record this uh, memory access pattern. And then we try to play with uh, different parameters to achieve something like maybe better performance, maybe could be important not to degrade performance at all. And also uh, potentially it's possible to play with uh, something like memory allocation uh, policy because it's possible to locate from different types of memory and memory something like uh, migration policy. So uh, if we can for example, detect memory uh, access pattern. So then uh, we need to try to optimize this. And uh, it's possible to see something like uh, maybe two 
um, uh, fundamental optimization problems. First of all, of course, uh, if you would like to use XML memory, we would like maybe improve performance or as a minimum not to degrade performance. That means that if we can uh, detect uh, memory allocation pattern, uh, potentially we can uh, see some maybe uh, repeatable sub-patterns in uh, this uh, memory uh, access pattern, and then we can uh, something like find or uh, maybe uh, patterns with more priority, for example, uh, really slow uh, patterns, and we can try to optimize namely with memory patterns. And the goal of optimization, namely to uh, decrease the amount of time that we spend on execution of our algorithm. It's one of the potential uh, optimization problem. Another one, uh, maybe, because for example, if we have CXL memory, it could be different type of CXL memory. It could be a local CXL memory, it could be CXL memory under switch, maybe under two switches or something. And finally, every type of CXL memory uh, could have something like uh, own latency. And it means that we could have something like several types of memory with different latencies. And uh, the problem here, for example, uh, how many each type of memory uh, we would like to use, or how we can build our CXL infrastructure with the goal, for example, maybe memory to achieve better performance by means of sharing memory, maybe uh, achieve better performance by means of some uh, optimization. So uh, it looks like that optimization pro uh, problem could be that we have some memory access pattern, we have some number of latencies, and for example, uh, how to build infrastructure, CXL infrastructure, what types of memory we would like to use. Uh, for example, how many we would like to have local CXL memory, for example, how many we would like to have uh, for maybe some remote CXL memory and what allocation policy we can use, something like this second type of optimization problem. And uh, Optimization workflow uh, looks like that first of all we need to understand uh, memory access pattern. Uh, then we can try to find maybe some repeatable patterns, slow patterns, and then we try to uh, optimize these patterns by means of uh, some variation of uh, these uh, mentioned parameters, or maybe take into account some potential policies or something. And then we can try to uh, like uh, emulate this uh, pattern by means of uh, like variation of these parameters and then uh, try to uh, something like change something in these uh, patterns and try to see could we uh, improve performance or could we not degrade performance? Uh, can we achieve something like our goal to achieve something like best outcome? And then uh, finally, if we can uh, find something, the next question will be how feasible could be this uh, optimization. Can we change our application or maybe uh, we can not change application, but we can change maybe location policy, how to achieve this uh, best outcome. And finally, if we can uh, change application, maybe change uh, location or migration policies and we can try to uh, play with this uh, optimization and we can try to maybe achieve uh, better performance or maybe not degrade performance. So the goal may be not necessary to improve performance, but for example, decrease TCO cost, because if you could use maybe more CXL memory that can be cheaper, then finally uh, it can decrease uh, the cost of the whole infrastructure. And, uh, but uh, for example, uh, the difficult question, for example, how to emulate CXL memory, because uh, if you have a CXL memory, or for example, you would like to play uh, with uh, some uh, type of memory, so how to do this? So uh, there are multiple approaches, but uh, not every approach looks good because some uh, hardware prototype could be uh, not easy to build, or it could be not flexible. Uh, RAM disk, for example, remote RAM disk could look like be uh, not so good because uh, it could uh, introduce uh, significant uh, latency and it could be not so uh, predictable. And if we talking about crew emulation, so finally maybe it's good for functional testing, but for uh, latency management it could be not so good and for benchmarking it could be not so useful, I think. So maybe my guess that maybe some 
mathematical model uh, can help, and uh, this model can be aided by maybe um, thinking about least data structure, because, for example, if you would like to uh, manage latency, for example, by adding some, like, some number of items in the list, it's possible to increase latency and uh, manage latency in some more predictable manner, from my point of view, if we consider something like uh, different types of persistent memory, so it's not so, uh, maybe more, not so flexible. It's possible, for example, doing swapping, but in this case, the question how to normalize uh, the result of this uh, testing, so, or benchmarking. So potentially, maybe a mathematical model plus least data structure could, uh, could help. And uh, finally, if we, for example, uh, know our memory access pattern and we would like to do some optimization, what is the way, potential way to do this optimization? So uh, first of all, it's possible to consider uh, changing in uh, location policy uh, by means of uh, selection of different types of memory. And also second uh, direction could be uh, to use uh, some migration policy between different types of memory. So uh, it's possible to consider multiple directions. For example, if you're considering size, so maybe smaller sizes in local DRAM, bigger sizes in 6L memory. Uh, for example, priority, but who will define this priority? Maybe application can do, maybe. Uh, some other subsystem, for example, higher priority in local DRAM, uh, lower priority in 6L memory. Also, for example, if we have a lot of 6L memory, uh, we can prefetch uh, some data into uh, 6L memory, try to use this memory. Uh, Prelocation policy, for example, if we could uh, allocate memory by big chunks, so finally it maybe could uh, help uh, in some way. And also, for example, lifetime uh, base allocation policy, uh, if, for example, some memory or some data can live uh, longer, then it could be placed in 6L, if it's shorter in local DRAM. Uh, and finally, uh, for example, uh, again, it's possible to place with, uh, play with lifetime, and uh, if we can define that this um, data will be uh, long-lived, then it should be placed in 6L. If it's uh, something like shorter time, it could be placed in DRAM. Uh, and maybe it's possible to use something like file system based uh, policy of uh, management. So finally, uh, it's possible to consider something like such 6L benchmarking framework. So first of all, it makes sense to uh, detect memory access pattern or some, have some subsystems that can do this. Uh, then it's possible to have memory access pattern emulation tool because if you know some number of parameters that we can uh, vary, and we can do this emulation. Uh, then we can use 6L memory emulator and try to benchmark our uh, memory pattern on this. And maybe finally, because it could be uh, multiple iterations, so maybe we can use some machine learning subsystems that can do this for us. And finally, we can try to solve uh, multiple problems. Maybe we can try to optimize memory access pattern, maybe we'll try to build our 6L infrastructure, so this is something like potential framework. <coughs> and also, uh, for the future, uh, maybe fabric manager can be uh, considered like benchmarking subsystem uh, in the background, because first of all, if you are talking about 6L, mostly it will be segregated architecture, it could be something like multiple host accessing uh, this memory, so finally, uh, fabric manager looks like uh, the main point of uh, doing this benchmarking and doing such management, because also it's important not, all, not only try to optimize application, but finally detect uh, how CXL infrastructure works. Uh, do we have some bottlenecks uh, or some degradation? Should we do something about this? And so on. And I think that open questions, uh, for example, Okay, we can do some emulation, and the main question, for example, how to do normalization of these results, and how good is good numbers, how bad is bad numbers, uh, and finally, how to uh, something like achieve uh, something like real life uh, uh, optimization results. So uh, I think that 6L benchmarking is complex problem, 
And I think this is my open questions for discussion. Yeah, so I know a team in Meta that's been grappling with the similar problems for a few years, and they released something called DC Perf recently, uh, which is a benchmark suite. What's more interesting now is how they generated the benchmarks. They used a number of tools and uh, techniques to to do that, and I think they expressed interest in you know open sourcing this. First, describing how they've done it and open sourcing part of that tooling stack. And I agree that would be a really cool thing to add to a fabric manager or fabric controller kind of entity that could talk to host agents and enable all this machinery, extract interesting uh, metrics and traces and so on from the from applications. Um, but they have, they have some very interesting techniques that they used for that to make it reliable. So they use it to predict performance on future iterations of hardware. Yeah, sounds good. In the end, it's again an optimization problem. And um, funnily enough, this is precisely what AI is about, isn't it? Um, the, but the more interesting question is, do we know what we want to optimize for? Do we know the knobs we need to tweak? And if we know, do we have hooks for tweaking it? The, uh, we, uh, I discussed it briefly with Jonathan. Um, currently, all the measurements we do within the kernel are based uh, centered around latency. <laughs> Bandwidth would be a good value to measure or to, to tweak, but we have no way currently how we could even measure or change bandwidth, it just happens to be. How would you do that? So for bandwidth control, we do have the advantage that some of the stuff done by res control uh, allows you to tweak the bandwidth on normal DRAM controllers so that you can do, we've, we've done a bunch of work on this when looking at some of the migration stuff, and you can tweak them up and down, and you can plot beautiful graphs because you can cap it. But the problem is it is um, you can't really tweak it. You can set it and then the only chance you have either you do the operation or you don't. You can't tell the operator, you can't tell the right, oh please go slower. Oh no, no it does. No, it absolutely does. Um, it, it will just throttle on the cues on the memory controller and it will push all the way back to the CPUs. Oh, okay. So yeah. It's not always available on all hardware but quite a few <laughs> platforms do support it. Uh, and it gives a line. That's the one thing we can do is bandwidth. Latency, you're, you're kind of typically capped at whatever the system does. For that, uh, people use techniques like the two NUMA nodes, yeah. right? And then they twiggle the BIOS settings uh, to. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> I have a question more general about the um, uh, memory, backend memory for the CXL here. All, all the here I saw, it seems says that the CXL memory is, is, a low, uh, is slower than the DRAM there. But uh, yeah. It, yeah, is there like a different way, like actually high bandwidth memory as the backend of CXL and uh, well, Hans um, commented on this earlier, and in fact he stayed his hand up, but I, I let him talk about it then. And <laughs> I, I thought he wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh, I do. Um, well, at the end of the day, it's all down to hardware. And surprise, surprise, um, you only get a benefit for CXL if you're using as much hardware as, as is available. You will not go into the trouble of inventing your own kind of hardware or DRAM for CXL. No, you will be using normal D available DRAM. That's kind of the point. Why would I need to do something else? Which then also means that, well, we already have a DRAM connector and that's normal DRAM slots. So you'd be hard pressed being faster than your normal DRAM slots. Because you're essentially, I mean, the idea is that this would be the optimal way of talking to it, the optimal way of talking to it. So um, I don't really expect them to be significantly faster than your normal DRAM. That would sort of imply to me that the manufacturer really, really, really messed up. I happen to work on the G NVIDIA stuff, of course, uh, the, the GH200 there. 
they they actually kind of upset we like uh, they are using the high bandwidth memory. It could be like three point five terabyte, and uh, every link C to C goes to the system memory. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that way, actually, the device memory is, is way faster than the system memory there. And uh, okay, for these devices, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, why CXL don't do like it's still yeah, well, it does. You no. Will, you will if you you start with CXL, you will find it faster. Yes, sure. So uh, okay. But from that side of things, if you're doing conventional CXL fives, etc., you won't. You will find it's perhaps faster than inter socket stuff, but you're not going to get there. Yeah, it's fundamentally yeah a PCI fi. However, there are certain standards that run CXL protocol over entirely different physical. Um, stuff and at that point, yeah, sure, you you might be in a situation where you might put HBM down, um, but at this time, most of the stuff is focused on stuff on the PCI fires. I yeah. think if anyone has any other devices, now's the time to shout. <laughs> you may get extremely high bandwidth because we do have the option to interleave an awful lot of six L devices, but the latency is always going to be capped. Yeah, well. It's usually the host end that's the problem. <laughs> it's just how many things can you wire up because it's pin limited. I okay. think this is a problem. How to you how to be faster to using slower memory? Any more questions? Okay. So on that note, I think we'll thank the last, last speaker. Thank you. Well.